Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Fall Carrier League, 76, 77, 8, 9, and we're going to have an elimination of two teams who just played each other who were playing out of the playoff bracket, and that is the Twins and White Sox. The White Sox ended up sweeping the Twins, putting them in the last place. White Sox get second place. Good for them. So let's start with the Twins first, since they finished in last, and we'll eliminate their guys and do the same thing with the Chai Sox. First thing we do is we pull the 76 guys out for each of the teams. It's a total of eight guys. We're doing this for each elimination video. And see who's going to be part of the nucleus moving forward next year. So we have 12 cards. And of the 12, there's usually a split of about seven hitters and five pitchers on the average. And then the Twins, it's exactly 7 and 5. So, 7 and 5 is what you kind of get most of the time. It sets you up for a balanced draft. And for the Twins, we have some good news in a lot of spots here, actually. It's actually not so bad. They got some good guys coming back. All right, um, Glenn Adams comes back at DH, which is great news. Uh, Glenn Borgman can catch for you, what that's worth. Carew's coming back. He's, you know, 77. He'll be around another one more year with this card, at least. Randall can play second. Castino third. You don't have a shortstop yet. You need to get one. Heisel can play a couple of outfield spots, as can Unser. So you need an outfielder and a shortstop another catcher. As far as the pitching goes, you have top two guys. Well, I love are coming back. Fred Norman in the three-hole. Haliki. So you're bringing your whole rotation back. There they are. These four guys. And Haliki's actually very good as a number four starter, by the way. The 285 area. That's a good Haliki card there. That's a good rotation for the Twins moving forward. They need a bullpen. They only have John Johnson. So that seems pretty simple. Simple plan. Balance. Focus on the bullpen for the Twins. And the eight guys going away, of course, are going to be five hitters and three pitchers. We talked about Smalley, the shortstop, Winter, the catcher. They'll probably come back. Stein, Dan Ford will probably come back. Bomber Rivera, maybe not. Bill Campbell might have a more good year left. Fulkers and Johnson, I'm not so sure about. So, we'll put that on the side. And then we'll take a look at the White Sox. And once we look at both teams, then we'll get into baseball reference and kind of take a little further than that. So now the White Sox, who had a 500 season, We'll take eight other 76 players, same drill. Oops. Seven, eight. Okay. Move these eight out of here. See which 12 guys they're coming back with. And I believe. Oh, that made my strategy uh, consistent. Yep, seven, five again. So both teams have that seven and five split. Seven hitters and five pitchers. That's pretty balanced. We've seen a lot of imbalance. When you have too much imbalance, when you go into a draft and you don't find what you're looking for because it doesn't exist, that could be troublesome. Balance gives you a better chance of, of getting the spots filled you need. Down in catching. Do we have a first baseman? I don't think we do. Ward at second. Solder home at third. Prior middle infielder. Kelly, Scott, and Zisk. Kelly's a one-way outfielder. So you need a uh, you need a first baseman, maybe a shortstop, and a guy to platoon in the outfield. On the pitching side of things, you got Marshall closing it out. You got a couple starters, Berrios and Kravik. They're okay. They're starter sevens. They're not that bad. I mean, it's the White Sox. So what do you expect out of this team? They got 408 and 413 ERAs. I mean. You're going to have to outscore the opposition. Uh, they got three good relievers. They're all right-handed, though. Maybe uh, a trade should be done to improve the team. Three very quality right-handed relievers coming back. Marshall, 245. Legro 245. Farmer, 3. Uh, you need a lefty. Righties are easy to find. Lefties more difficult. So, let's take again another look at the eight. The five hitters, Metzger, 
He'll only come back if he's good defensively. Lamar Johnson, I think he's still got a couple good years left. Kim, I don't know. Alan Bannister, I think he's got some good years left. Carlos May might be toast. Hassler's tricky. He had like off and on, bad years, good years. You gotta hope you hope you find the right year with him. Uh, like we saw in Wilbur's start, this could be it. I'm not sure what he's got left. And then you have Catfish Hunter, who was a one-year rental. This is the 76 uh, Yankee card. But the Oakland A's let him go. Yankees didn't sign him because they didn't need him quite yet. And the White Sox pounced on him for one year. And after this, you'll see that he's not that great anyway. So the White Sox or the Yankees or whoever else might pounce on Catfish Hunter. So we'll go to Baseball Reference and see uh, what the White Sox and Twins are going to do. Folks, we'll start with the twins first, and we'll start with the uh, the hitters, and then the pitchers, and uh, let's see here. Look, like Disco Dan Ford. Uh, he'll play for the Twins and Angels. Let's see how the distribution goes at this point. So, 76 Dan Ford. You see him with the Twins hat right there. His that's over with, and so we're looking for 77 through 80. He's got two years of the Twins, two years of the Angels. Interesting. And he's about the same. Very consistent. Two 760 OPS throughout. MVP year for the Angels in 79 with 20 home, 21 homers, 101 RBIs, and a 290 average. So you could say that maybe he should be an Angel and not a Twin. But let's at least keep him for now before we decide we will either tra trade or waive him. Dan Ford on the keeper list at 10,000 tokens. Next up is Bombo Rivera. Now, I know he does play for the Twins a little bit longer here. How many Bombos are there? He's the only one. There he is for the Twins. Got a Twins hat on right there. And um, Problem one, he doesn't have a 77 card, which means you cannot put him on waivers. All wavered players have to have a 77 Stratomatic card, or the beginning year Strat card. You can't put him on waivers. You gotta keep him, or you gotta retire him. And you know what? You may as well keep him. He's got two decent years. No reason to retire a guy who's got some, you know, he's got some tread left on the tires there. So let's keep Bomber Rivera. Okay, we're keeping our first two guys we see. Interesting. Next up, Roy Smalley. Roy Smalley, the first one. Is that his grandfather or his father? He's also got a Twins hat on. I'd like to see that when you're looking at the Twins team. And 77. Now we know, yeah, this is, yeah, he's an all-star in 79. 24 homers. 16th in MPP voting. That is a no-brainer, folks. Roy Smalley. Uh... Power hitting middle, switch hitting shortstops, hard to find. So he is a keeper. Bill Stein. Now he actually didn't even play for the Twins, so this should be a no-brainer as a waiver or cut or retire guy. He's got a Mariners hat here. Stein played for a few teams, White Sox, Mariners, St. Louis, Seattle, Texas. Yeah. Um, a lot of tread left on his tire, tires. Typical, this is a, Bill Stein is a typical waiver guy. He gives them waivers and... Uh, he puts a resume out, and he gets phone calls, and you know he gets plugged into spots as a utility guy on teams. Very versatile player. He'll get some work. Don't worry about his future. He'll land a job. And matter, matter of fact, in 1981, the dude hit 330 in a limited sample size. Can't get that card quite yet. But yeah, you'll get a decent card anyway. A clever team would take the 77 Bill Stein. And then realize, once you have that card, you then apply the keeper label. And then, boom, you just upgrade it to that 1981 card. So, yeah, he will definitely be in the league, pretty sure. Can't imagine why he wouldn't be. Butch Winnegar, next up. Also with the Twins hat on. Good to see that Baseball Reference recognizes these guys before they end up playing for the Yankees. <laughs> Which is what happened to Smalley and Winnegar. Uh, Winnegar, yeah, he'll go to a 77 All-Star game for the Twins. He's another keeper. So you see, it's all offense we're keeping. 
And when I'm looking at the pitchers, yep, makes a whole lot of sense. Next up is Rich Folkers. I think he's toast. He has a 77 season. The Cardinal hat on here. 77 season is no. He, did, he only had a cup of coffee. He's on the retired list. Nice career. Thank you, Rich Folkers, for your work. But we won't be needing you anymore. He gets retired. Tom Johnson. How many Tom Johnsons are there? Just one. Look at that. Answer a trivia question. Only one Tom Johnson. Got that Twins hat on. And uh, he's got two good years. Um, matter of fact, he went from a guy who threw 48 innings to a guy who threw 146 innings out of the pen. The whip's a buck 35, though. Let's put him on the keeper list for now. Which gets us to five, which isn't going to work. So we'll have some decisions to make. But for now, we'll put him on the keeper list. We got five, one, and one. We want to get. The, we need to get the four, two, and two before the draft. And last one is Bill Campbell. You know he was a 17 game winner. This card, as a matter of fact, that I'm holding in my hand, is the 17 game winning Bill Campbell. And actually, when you think about it, 77 Red Sox. You know they lost out to the Yankees and, but Campbell was fine 31 saves at 296 he had a good first year with the Red Sox um, so it's time to let him go twins put him on waivers and uh, will it be the Red Sox who jump on him or somebody else so Campbell goes on waivers and we could really fix this quite easily One way of fixing this quite easily is, remember this Bomba Rivera card? Um, if, you know, you do it like that. But, there's no reason to do that quite yet. Keep them active now so we know if some other team is looking for a keeper, the Twins are, will deal them. We'll deal Bombo to a team looking for a keeper. And if not, let's retire the, the guy. Because Dan Ford... Smalley, Winnegar, Tom Johnson are all good. You clearly have two waiver guys here and one retired guy. So that's pretty pretty solid. Solid marks for the Twins. And let's just get right into the Chai Sox, who are actually next. And the Chai Sox... Um, it'll be, um, again, five hitters and three pitchers. We'll start with Alan Bannister. Now I know he has a nice long career as a utility guy. Can play all over the all over the field. Plays through to 85. He's got a White Sox hat on there. And 77. He's a good Chai Sox player. Plays with them through 80. Then he goes to Cleveland for four years. Um. In 80, he split time between the Chai Sox and Indians. Looks like the, it looks like it went 192 for the White Sox and at 328 for Cleveland. Good for good for old Allen. Um, I guess you start again like you did when we saw uh, uh, Dan Ford on Twins and Angels. Here we see Bannister on the White Sox and Indians. Let's hold on for now in case there's nothing better go, coming along. We're going to keep him. Lamar Johnson. Now this is going to be a little disappointing because we just had his best year, I believe. 76. White Sox hat again. Yeah, 320. But look, I mean, he's still hitting 302 a year later. His OPS improves in 79. Ah, he's he's a White Sox. Hell of heck yeah. I was thinking more of 80. He starts to tail off a little bit. So yeah, we still got some big years coming up at Lamar Johnson. That's a good pick. Next up, Kim. Bruce Kim. There he is. 76 to 80. White Sox out again. No, 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 and no. He, um, yeah, he's in and out of baseball. Hey, he can come out of retirement in 1980. Well, let's let it happen. Let's at least put him on the retired list for now. And if he comes out, he comes out. That's great. Carlos May. Brother of Lee May, I think. I believe so, right? 
brother of Lee May, uncle of Jacob May. Thank you for that. And uh, I think we're getting near the end of the rope here. So 77. It continues with the Yankees and Angels. It's not very good. It's not even worth a waiver. It, yeah, I would just simply retire him. I mean, corner outfielders who are platoons who hit that poorly really aren't worth even picking up on waivers because you could find something else out there like that. So let's put Carlos May on the retired list. Next up, Roger Metzger. And we have to, this is, this is where defense is really going to be an important part of the equation here. He never actually did play for the White Sox. They, they, they picked him up because nobody claimed him because the batting average was so low, not realizing that he was, he won a gold glove in 73. He was still a one in 76. At this point on, I believe he's a two. But the batting average in 78 is 246. And then in 79 and 80, it's 251 and 074. What we're going to do here is, <laughs> he does have a card in 77 and it's a 186 card. We're going to waive him. We're going to actually not retire him. We're going to waive him and see if a team is looking for a defensive shortstop and gives him a job. And then if it doesn't work out and he doesn't get plucked off the waiver list, we can push him into retirement. All right, Catfish Hunter. Interesting story here. Um, when he goes to the Yankees at this era, and he went there in 76, he went to the All-Star game in 76, he actually, in 77, he flamed out. But then in 78, he comes back with the Yankees. That's a decent year. The 112 whip. And uh, 12 and 6, he got himself a World Series ring for the, those Yankees. So after the, you know... You get the one good year in there, so his career is definitely not over. But for the White Sox, it was a one-year rental. They're not going to keep him. They'll put him on waivers. If somebody wants to go jump, jump on him, you can. Next up, Wilbur Wood. How many, how many Wilbur Woods are there? There it is. Okay, he's got two years left. Any of them any good? Wow, look at this career, folks. He starts in 1961 with the Red Sox. Pittsburgh, the White Sox the rest of the way. Oh, boy. I hate to say it. I hate to see this, because on a participation level, he has two full seasons of 120 and 168 innings, and, you know, 27 and 28 starts here, and but statistically, he really should hang out. This is sort of a tough spot for the White Sox to be in. Um, you put him on waivers, nobody's going to pick him up. I would just say retire him. It was wor you know, worst thing, you can pull him out of retirement. And that's, this is the problem I come up with sometimes in the four-year carryover league. There's a certain... You've got to be a certain good enough to get in the four-year carryover league, regardless of your name. Name recognition aside, the dude was 35 and 36. He could play for a, you know, a Chicago White Sox, just a regular league, but not the carryover league. He doesn't quite, just not good enough. I'm going to retire him. And I made that statement I made during his start correct. His team won in his final start. He didn't get credit for the win, but he pitched pretty well. Any Hassler. 71 to 85, and this is a tricky one. It, it jumps all over the place. He had lost. He, it's an interesting story of Hassler where he lost like, look at the losses early on here. He had lost like 20 games in a row or something awful. He's 3 and 12, 5 and 12, and then um, he starts to put it together for a brief bit, and then he falls apart and puts it back together a, a second time. So here we are, 76 was a good year, 77's a bad year, 78's an okay year with two teams, 79's an awful year with two teams, and 80 he puts it back together with two more teams. 
and that's a good card. The 80 Hassler card is good with the Angels. But look at the traveling, okay? Uh, 76, California, Kansas City, Boston, the Mets, Pittsburgh. Boy, that's a definition of a waiver guy. So Hassler's going on waivers. He might end up on an expansion team. He'll be a, if you pick this 80 card with a 249 ERA, you'll be pretty happy with it. That's a pretty good card, that 80 California card. And you'd have it for four years because it's a 77, 78, 79, 80 carry really moving forward. So he'll go on waivers. They're two, three, and three. So they have to make some moves. They could make they could deal with the twins because it was the twins who were five, you see. The twins had an extra keeper, and the White Sox are short two keepers. So it could be them. There's a lot of time before the draft starts. For, the, uh, for this to be determined. Anyway, that's it from the American League Midwest, eliminating two teams at once, the Twins and White Sox. Thank you for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.